This development could change everything for the Toronto Raptors. It might be a long shot. In fact, it certainly probably is a long shot for this Raptors group, but I am still holding out hope. So we're going to break down what's sort of going on with all the standing situations across the league that could have a serious impact on the Toronto Raptors. Additionally, we have some injury updates and players are turning in. Jeff Downton Jr., Getting signed to a full-out NBA contract. Not with the Raptors, but another squad. So, lots of stuff to sink our teeth into. But before we dive into that, folks, again, over 50% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. And we want to keep you up to date with all of the latest ongoings with the Toronto Raptors. So, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with this team. And also, check out Courtside Digest if you're interested in NBA content. Been covering daily content over there. I'm back hosting on that channel. So, if you want some NBA content with the Raptors that are kind of struggling, definitely check out that channel over there. But let's dive into the news. Let's dive into what's been going on. First thing we'll discuss is multiple Raptors returns incoming. So, obviously, the Raptors and ton of players in and out of the lineup, not playing this sort of close of the season. And it's helped facilitate a tank. It's helped the Raptors just end up on, I think, a 15-game losing streak here now at this point. So it has helped the sort of direction of maintaining our draft picks and stuff like that. But it does still suck for the Raptors group to be uh, having their guys out of the lineup. I mean, for young players to develop, it's nice for them to get reps, especially in games like this where it's at an NBA level, NBA level competition. But... Obviously, they have a longer leash to sort of make mistakes, to go out there on the court and do their thing. So the more guys that actually have a chance of being on this roster long term in the future, it's nice to have them on the roster, whether it's win or lose. And basically, we have some updates. Basically, Gary Trent Jr., Ochai Abaji, and Bruce Brown are all questionable for uh, tonight's game against Milwaukee Bucks. And RJ Barrett and Kelly Olynyk are expected officially to be back, while Barnes, Pirtle, Boucher, Jonte Porter, and uh, Carton all remain out. So... That's uh that's the returns. It'll be really nice. Abaji's the guy I'm really excited to see back. Obviously, RJ was back for the prior game, but Ochai Abaji's a player I think really could use the reps. Had unfortunate timing with that injury, so I'm excited to see him back in the lineup, see what he could do, and I really want to see him play his actual position because the Raptors right now are kind of playing him at the four position when he's been out there on the court, so him playing the natural sort of big two, you know, kind of a smaller three, that's sort of where I want to see Obagi get some reps because off the bench with the Toronto Raptors, that's probably where he's going to be playing in the future, so nice to see those guys return, nice to see those guys come back, but let's dive into something that could be uh, going on for the Toronto Raptors as this could certainly be a major development for this team if everything works up now I know part of this is probably complete cope complete hopium for this Raptors group but we had a couple developments yesterday a couple developments around the league which could seriously help the Toronto Raptors level up in the draft standing so basically how we're looking at it right now and this is another thing that made me really check into this uh Kevin O'Connor did a mock draft, and I wasn't sure how he sort of sorted it. It's by a losing streak, so this has nothing to do with the actual, uh, what's it called? The actual potential of the Raptors leaping into the top four, top one pick or draft selection. But uh, he had Alex Sarr going to the Toronto Raptors. I looked at some highlights of this man. He could be really nice. He could be really, really good. Again, I, I don't want to do too much draft stuff while the season's still going on, but just got me a little bit excited and got me a little eager to see what's going on around the NBA. And basically, right now, we're looking at the Portland Trailblazers regular season schedule to close out this year. The Portland Trailblazers just got a win against the Charlotte Hornets last night. They play the Washington Wizards tomorrow or in their next game, whenever that next game is. It might be tonight. I think it's tonight. But basically, the Portland Trailblazers have been really... One and one with the Toronto Raptors in the tank as of late. I mean, if you look at the standings right now, the Raptors now with the Portland Trailblazers win. They're only three games back of them in terms of the tankathon sort of standing. So if the Raptors continue to lose out for the rest of the season, which I don't think any Raptors fan would be shocked if that you know ends up happening, but the Raptors lose out to close out this year, and the Blazers just win three more games. They win three more games. We can catch that squad in the tanking standings. And again, they're playing the Washington Wizards, which is a winnable game. Scoot Henderson just had one of his better games of the season against the Charlotte Hornets. He's motivated to sort of get some Ws to close out this year. I mean, if they beat the Wizards, then we are two games back of the of the Portland Trailblazers in terms of the take-a-thon standings. The Raptors lose out. All they have to do, all Portland has to do, is win two of these games to close out this year. Could Boston rest a few of their guys? Could Delano Banton be fired up to play against his former team? Maybe a possibility. 
I mean, the Pelicans, the 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 Pelicans, Warriors, Rockets, and uh, Kings. The Rockets might be knocked out at that point, but we'll see. They've been hot down the stretch, but you know, if they can just get two of these wins. The Raptors could potentially catch the Portland Trailblazers out there in the standings, leading them to, in terms of odds, in terms of percentages, they would have a percentage of jumping into the top four at 42%. Higher than the 37 that we have sort of there. Again, is it lucratively high? No, but it's a significant sort of increase, and two teams would have to overtake us in order to not keep our draft pick. Five, whether we jump into the top four or not, five gives us a much, much higher probability of keeping our draft pick. Because again, if it falls out of the top six, the Raptors draft pick is going to the San Antonio Spurs. So again, if we can catch the Portland Trailblazers, that would be massive for this group. Not just an odds of getting the number one overall pick, but certainly for keeping our draft pick for the season. But that's not the only development that's going on around the NBA. Because if you look at the standings going on right now, the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers are two surprise teams that right now are kind of out of the, that are currently in the play in picture. Now, what's going on with both of these rosters? Now, the Heat had a tough loss last night, but the Philadelphia 76ers have Joel Embiid back and they've been accumulating wins left, right, and center. They're motivated to get out of that play in picture. And with Joel Embiid out of the, uh, back in the lineup, they can win a ton of games. The Miami Heat are also a squad that has put things together lately out there for uh, for down there Miami, as they seem to do all the time this year. And what does this matter for the Toronto Raptors? Why should Toronto Raptors fans care about this? Well, the Raptors have the Indiana Pacers pick in this year's NBA draft as of right now. And if we look at the sort of tangle on standings as well, or I guess I've cropped it here now at this point, the Indiana Pacers currently would have the 17th overall pick in this year's NBA draft. However, if they get surpassed by the Miami, the Philadelphia 76ers, and say both teams pass them, and then the, the Pacers end up at the 8th seed, then they have a tough sort of game to, to get out of the plane against either Miami or Philadelphia, likely. And then you never know what could happen. The Bulls could potentially beat them. The Hawks could potentially beat them. And then the Indiana Pacers could potentially fall into the lottery. And the Raptors have two lottery picks. This disastrous season where the Raptors might not have their draft pick, everything that's going on, we could potentially have two lottery picks if the, if, if the Pacers get knocked out of the playing tournament. Again, super likely. I think it's likely they'll fall into the plane. I mean, the Sixers have been on another level. They're only a game back. The Miami Heat have been playing amazing lately. I mean, we can look at the last 10, right? Uh, Miami 6-4. Uh, Sixers are 5-5, five and five, but obviously they've been on a three-game win streak with Embiid back in the lineup. I mean, the Pacers, they have a tough schedule down the stretch as well. Right, OKC, that's a tough game. Miami, that's going to be a bloodbath. I'm actually going to be watching that game. I'm pumped to sort of watch that game there. Obviously, they play us, so that's probably a win for the Indiana Pacers. But the Cavs, again, are a team that want to win some games, stay ahead of the New York Knicks, and the Atlanta Hawks, who are currently in the playing picture. I mean, it's doable. It's doable. It's not out of the realm of possibility that the Raptors, they have their draft pick. They catch the Portland Trailblazers. That one win has given me too much hope. I know the comment section is already going to be gas up, Ben. This is crazy. Whatever, whatever. But there's a possibility. There's a route where the Raptors get two lottery picks this season, and I am here for it. This is my hope. This is my saving grace to close out this year. My optimism to watch the end of this regular season NBA. So let me know what you guys think, if that's doable, if that's an actual possibility. But the final thing we're taking a look at is good news uh, for, uh, for at least me. I'm a Jeff Doughton guy. But Jeff Doughton Jr. ended up getting signed for the Philadelphia 76ers. He's on a couple short-term contracts, two-way deals. But basically, news has come out that the Sixers has signed Jeff Doughton Jr. for the rest of the season. Sources have told ESPN he played for Sixers uh, coach uh, Nick Nurse in his year with the Toronto Raptors and has been on a two-way deal for the Philadelphia 76ers. But now, Jeff Doughton's on a full-out roster. He's been on a two-way deal, but... Shout out to Jeff Downton Jr., man. Love to see that. He's putting up some decent stats. Again, not, not crazy minutes. Nothing too, too phenomenal. But 4.4 points, you know, 1.6 rebounds, 2.4 assists, facilitating. You know, it doesn't really matter his stats to Toronto Raptors fans at this point. He's shooting 50% behind the three-point line in a small sample size. But uh, Jeff Downton Jr. is a guy I've been rooting for to make his spot, find his footing in the NBA, and I'm happy he did, even if it's against, a, I guess, not a rival team right now, but generally a rival team for the Raptors. But... I don't know. Shout out to Jeff Downton Jr. Shout out to those Sixers teams. Rooting for them here now at this point to get some wins because it helps us in our quest to get a lottery pick from the Indiana Pacers. But folks, you guys are the best to make us far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.